In this video, we're going to be covering the most useful shortcuts that you can find within OpenOffice to increase your work productivity. Some of these shortcuts are specific to OpenOffice, and other shortcuts are actually universal across most writing applications. The ones which I'm going to be sharing with you today are going to be the ones which I believe you will most commonly use within OpenOffice Writer, though there are more that you can find at wiki.openoffice.org, which I'll also have a link to in the lecture description. So let's go ahead and get into these shortcuts. To start things off, we have Control A for Select All, which is one of the shortcuts which you can use in most writing applications, and there's good reason for that. It's very useful, especially when you combine it with Copy and Paste, which are the next two shortcuts. So to select everything, you hit Control A, and what this will do is select everything in the main body section of your document from the very start of page one, all the way down to the last page, including uh, extra hidden symbols, like right here you have an extra space that you can't see unless you have Control A for select all. So with everything selected, we can now copy it by hitting Control C. Now this will copy everything we have selected into a temporary memory space from which we can paste it. And we can paste it into this document again, or more usefully, we can post it into a email or another application where we may need this information. So for instance, I have everything selected, so I hit Control C to copy it. We can't see anything visibly happening because it's all in the background. And then we hit Control V and we paste it. And what you can do on top of this is keep repasting it. So if you have something that you need to actually paste multiple times or you want to copy something and repeatedly have it in your document, this becomes very, very useful because you can quickly have the exact same content being repeated by copying and pasting it. So next I'd like to mention the Find and Replace dialog box, which you can open up quickly with Control F on your keyboard. By opening up the Find and Replace dialog box, it goes a step beyond the Find toolbar you see here next to the standard toolbar, because it allows you not only to find text, but it also allows you to replace that text with another term as many times as you would like. And the Spell Checker dialog, which you can open up with F7, is probably one of the most commonly used ones, simply because when people have mistakes they've made inside of their document, which happens to everybody, honestly, it's good to just use the dictionary in order to help them fix their spelling and grammatical mistakes. And this is where you would do it, just by hitting F7 to open this up. Of course, you'll notice here that it will say CTRL for a control is incorrectly spelled. And that's just because the dictionary doesn't actually recognize that CTRL is short form for control. So you have to be careful when you're using the spell checker because sometimes it'll make suggestions which are actually incorrect. So use your brain, and it's still a useful tool because it will make the right suggestions in most cases. You just have to watch out when it makes a faulty one or doesn't recognize how a word is actually spelled because it's not in the dictionary. Next up, we have the align shortcuts. Now, these are very good when you're working with headers because sometimes you want a header to be centered on the page. It just looks a lot nicer. In rare circumstances, you may want something to be aligned right. Uh, that is, to the right side of the page. And in other cases, you can have it aligned to left, which is the default alignment. So if you want to change the alignment, you would hit Control L for left, Control E for centered, and Control R for right. So to demonstrate Control E for centered, R for right, and L for left. It's just a very quick way of doing the same thing that you have up here on the formatting toolbar, the icons for aligned left, aligned centered, and aligned right. This also aligned justified, which you can do by hitting Control J, but that is less frequently used. Next in the list of standard writing application shortcuts that you can use is undo and redo. In almost all cases, it's Control Z to undo and Control Y to redo. For instance, I was messing around with the alignment a second ago, so if I wanted to go back to the previous alignment I had it at, I could just hit Control Z, and I don't even have to remember personally where I had it because the computer does that for me. And if I want to redo the left align, instead of hitting Control L, I can hit Control Y. Now, what when this becomes useful is when you have very complex tasks that you want to undo or redo, and you don't remember exactly how you just did it, that's when undo and redo becomes a very important tool because the computer will always remember what you just deleted how you just typed something out, the exact header style you changed to, etc., etc. 
So remember, control Z to undo and control Y to redo your last action. Next up, we have the shortcuts for managing paragraph style. Now, what it means by paragraph and the context of OpenOffice Writer is usually going to be when you hit the inner key on your keyboard, that breaks off into a new paragraph. And you can see when you have a paragraph break, actually, by going up here to the non-printing characters or hitting Control F10, which will show you this little symbol, which represents paragraph, every time you've actually created a new paragraph. Just FYI. But what these paragraph settings will do is let you change between different styles of header or the default body text paragraph style. Now, the default style is going to be Times New Roman by default. Of course, you can actually change what it means for a style to be in default, heading 1, heading 2, etc. But by default, if we hit Control 0, it'll change it to 12 point font Times New Roman which is fine. In many cases, that's what you would use to write a document, so that's why it's the default style. But let's say that we wanted to actually take this and make it a heading. You could play around with the formatting toolbar up here and change it to heading 1, or you could simply hit Control 1, uh, while well, you have it selected, Control 1, to make it a heading 1. Heading 1 being the largest of the headings. Normally it goes through heading 1 to heading 5, or in some cases 6, depending on what program you're using. Control 2 for a slightly smaller heading 2 paragraph style, and Control 3 for heading 3. Of course, this also goes on to heading 4 and heading 5, predictably by Control 4 and Control 5, but those heading styles are very rarely actually used. So let's go ahead and put undo last option into action here. What I want to do is change this back to how it was. Now, I can't just do that by clicking over here on the formatting toolbar and changing a format because even default isn't the right type of font. It has this Courier New font style. Now, I can quickly change back to this instead of putting Courier New and 10 font size up here in the formatting toolbar just by hitting Control Z about four or five times to get back to heading one, then default style, and then the Courier New font style 10 point font that we had it at before we even started messing with it. So that's just a very quick way you can get back to how things were if you've decided that you didn't like how it turned out. Now you know of course as I explained a minute ago that if you hit enter on your keyboard it will create a new paragraph. Let's say for instance that you didn't want to do that. Well all you would need to do to create a line break without a paragraph change is to hit shift enter on your keyboard. And this would be most useful if you want this new line to have the same style as the previous line. For instance, if I start typing stuff here, and then we hit control zero to change this paragraph into the default style, you'll notice that it changes not only this line, but the line above it, because we didn't create a new paragraph. This is still in the same paragraph. So if you ever want formatting to work that way, where the new line has the same formatting as the old line, uh, using shift enter is a great way to do that. Next, we have the manual page break shortcut, which is very important if you're converting your document into other formats, for instance, if you're an ebook writer. And that's because certain formats, if you have a bunch of extra inner spaces like this, those extra spaces and empty symbols will be stripped out by the new format, for instance, if you're converting into an EPUB format for a ebook. So if you do a manual page break instead, it's a completely new type of symbol, which will actually be picked up by those different formats. So we have a page break instead of a bunch of empty new lines here. And that takes us straight to the next page. There's nothing in between here where we have the control enter and we put the page break in to right here at the start of the next page. That becomes very important for keeping your formatting as you convert into new formats. Next up, for those of you who actually prefer not to use the mouse where possible, using your arrow keys can often be a much quicker way of working around a document on your keyboard once you get used to it. So if you use up, down, left, and right, that will predictably move you up, down, left, and right on your keyboard. Left for left, right for right, etc. Now this becomes more useful when you're moving up and down because you can get to the precise line you want to just by hitting up and down a few times, and that's a lot quicker than reaching for the mouse and selecting the line in the exact positioning you were at. Also, when you move up and down, it keeps the same character position between the lines, and that is actually quite useful, because otherwise you'd have to be counting, and that's just a huge pain if you have to have the exact amount of characters on each line. 
Now another way you can move around the lines in your document using your keyboard is to use the home and end keys. Home will take you to the beginning of a line. As you see here, just by hitting the key, it moves me right there to the very beginning before any characters are spelled out. And then we can hit the end key, likewise, to move to the end of the line. Now for any of these methods we're talking about for moving around the document on your keyboard, you can hold down the shift key, for instance putting shift and home, to actually select everything between where your cursor is at before you hold shift down to the new location of the cursor and select everything between those two areas, which can be quite useful. For instance, I'm pushing down here on the down arrow. If you want to select a certain portion of your document and you want a certain level of precision there, uh, that you get with the keyboard that you might misclick if you are using the mouse and pressing and holding down on the left mouse button. You can, of course, use this with the end key as well, demonstrated right there, and it's just fairly useful to know. You can also, of course, combine shift with the end keys in addition to the arrow keys and the home button. Now, if you're working in a document and you want to go to the start of the document, you can get there simply by hitting control and home, which will take you right before anything gets typed at all. Even a single character, a single invisible line, it will be at the very start. Likewise, if you hit control end, it'll take you to the very end of the document, and that includes moving past any invisible paragraph characters that you might have. For instance, we have one right here. If I go up here to the non-printing characters, which you can also toggle by hitting control F10, then you'll see there was a new paragraph character right here, and that's why it put me here and not here. Now, the last shortcut I'd like to talk about in this video is actually the insert mode toggle. If you remember from the last video when I was discussing the interface, right here you can actually see the current insert mode we have selected, and this has two modes. One is insert, which is the standard way of typing characters into a document. In other words, when you're typing a character, regardless of what's in front of it, it will add a new character in instead of overriding whatever's in front of it. However, if we toggle this by either left clicking down here or hitting insert key on the keyboard, which is the shortcut, and we put it in overwrite mode, then anything in front of where our cursor actually is is going to be deleted as we start typing. And you can see this because the text will be blinking in front of it. So for instance, let's type some characters in here and you'll see every character is overwritten by the character we type on our keyboard. Now this is really useful to know, uh, not necessarily because overwrite is something that people commonly use, but because it's one of those modes that's easy to get toggled into and very annoying if you don't know what's going on. If you're stuck in overwrite mode and you want to go back and add some characters in without overwriting the text, then all you need to do is hit insert key on your keyboard. And whenever you see that blinking text, it's just good to know that probably means you're in overwrite mode. So insert key to toggle that off, and you can go back to your normal way of typing characters in, where it gets added rather than overwritten. Now, of course, in this video, I only talked about the shortcuts which I felt were most useful and most practical inside of OpenOffice Writer. But if you want to go learn more about the shortcuts, you can find them on wiki.openoffice.org using this direct link, which I will actually put in the lecture description, so you don't have to type it all in, but it is right there on screen if you feel the need to do that. So that's it for this video. Till the next one, see you then.